Hey everybody and welcome to part two of cleaning out the Mustang. So we did the trunk in last week's episode. We're gonna be moving to the front of the car in this week's episode. So we're gonna start by pulling out that rear seat. We might do a little bit of vacuuming before we do that just to get some of the nastiness out of the way. Uh, but then we'll pull the rear seat, then we're gonna pull the front seats and we'll show you how to pull those front seats since they're not like a traditional car today. Then we're gonna pull the carpets and then if we have time, we will assess the floor pan. Uh, otherwise, we will save that for the next episode and starting to get the car disassembled and things like that. So stay tuned! <laughs> All right, so we're gonna start pulling carpets now. Uh, you may notice that I am wearing an apron, mask, and eye protection. I'm also gonna be wearing gloves. This is something I wanna to iterate to everyone out there who's doing a rest of mod or working on a car. No matter what it is you're doing, always make sure you have the proper safety equipment, you know, the, the proper personal protective equipment or also known as PPE, whatever you wanna call it. Just make sure you have the right stuff because when you're working on cars, there are a lot of dangerous things or dangerous substances uh, that can really cause some serious harm. So, you know, I'm gonna be working in a you know, really old interior that rats have been crawling around. So, you know, obviously I wanna make sure that I'm not breathing any of that in as I'm tearing up the carpets. Uh, you know, wanna make sure that none of it gets in my eyes and I'm wearing an apron because aprons are awesome. And if you don't have one, you should get one. Without further ado, let's get started. Okay guys, we are gonna take a hot second just to give an oh my god moment. Look at all of the crap from these mice underneath the seat. Oh my god. Let's go back inside and show you what's underneath the seat. I thought what was on the carpet was bad. Oh my god. There's so much crap built up in here from all these mice. Holy. <coughs> oh. All right, well, I guess the next thing's to try and take out the front seats and that rear. Jesus. Hey everybody, so we made some great progress on getting the carpets pulled out and cleaned. Uh, the only portion left is to pull out the front carpets, but in order to do that, we actually have to pull out the seats. Now, interesting thing about the seats in the uh, first generation Mustangs is they are not bolted, or you cannot take them out from the inside of the car. They are actually bolted from underneath the car. So the only way to take the seats out is to get underneath the car and unbolt them and then you can pull the seats out. So I'm gonna be showing you guys how to do that on these old Mustangs. Um, my apologies in advance. It is super windy today, so I can't promise the best audio quality, quality but we will do our best. All right, so we are underneath the car. I have decided to be lazy and not jack up the car to give myself a little bit more clearance. Um, because, well, like I said, I'm lazy. So, we have to take the front seats out in order to remove the front seats so we can get out the carpeting. And like I said before, the old Mustangs 
did not have bolts that were accessible from the interior. They were actually bolted from underneath. And you can find all four bolt locations with these rubber plugs underneath. Now this one has been removed. Um, it's fallen out over time. The other four are here, here, and here. And so we're gonna remove these plugs just using a screwdriver. We're probably not gonna keep them because they're so old that they've kind of dried out. Um, but these plugs were originally there to make sure that water didn't get underneath the seats, inside the chassis, where it could rust and rot out the bottom pan. Um, this is actually my first time really getting underneath here with some proper light. And I'm really liking what I'm seeing on this pan. It gives me great confidence that what we're going to see when we pull out the carpets is going to be just as good on top, if not better, than what I see underneath here. This car is really relatively rust free and that's fantastic because it means that the amount of body work that we're going to have to do on the frame and the chassis is probably going to be pretty minimal once we've got it sandblasted so uh i'm going to keep working away here got all four plugs out so now we're gonna find out what the uh, size socket is that we need uh, I could look in the manual uh, but it's gonna be just as fast uh, just kind of trying out a few deep wall sockets you will need a deep wall socket uh, because these bolts extend quite a bit and you're probably gonna need an extender on your ratchet just to reach them uh, but yeah that's gonna be much faster than looking through a book that's you know this thick so we're going to get on to that, and then we'll do the other side once we're done on this one. Now, one other thing I do want to add is that if your plugs are gone and you're working on one of these old cars, uh, you might want to consider, not might want to consider, I highly recommend that you use something like a WD-40 or some kind of penetrating lubricant because there's a high probability that at some point, you know, fluid or water has gotten in there and it's rusted over and you don't want to be snapping off your bolts. Um, so... If you don't have your plugs left, and even if you do, um, it still might be wise to do so. So just keep that in mind. So, now that we've got all four out on this side, we're going to do the other side, get those four out, and then we'll pull the seats. So, we had a slight hiccup. Uh, pulling one of the nuts out here, it fell to a location that I can't actually reach it. I know roughly where it is, it's roughly in here. If you have a good light source, you shine it up in the hole and use one of these little extendable adjustable mirrors. They're super cheap, they're like $1.50 at Harbor Freight. Go up in there and identify where the nut is and you can use uh, a pick or you know maybe even a bent piece of wire, something that holds a little bit of rigidity to fish it out of there. Now, if you wanna take out the seats, you can do it in two steps. Um, the first, if you wanna remove the back, which I've done here, it's very easy to do. All there is on the door side of each seat are two screws that hold on a little cover. So, I've got one here, I've already taken it off, and this is just so I can show the camera. These two screws for this plate come off. 
Once that those have come off, it's relatively easy to take the back off. Just pull the latch back that would normally allow you to shift the seat forward. And then all you have to do is pull on the tabs on the sides. These just sit on little, uh, little pinions on there. So there's just holes in these brackets and they stretch. So just pull on them a little bit until you can get one or both off and they'll just come right off. So in this case, you can see one of the holes for the bracket. So here, a pinion that's in the lower part of the seat, which actually you can see right here, it just slides right over. So super duper simple, very easy. I'm probably gonna take the other seat out as a whole, just cause there's no need to take them apart separately at this time. And it's always a good idea that when you're taking car, you know, parts in and out of a vehicle, on and off a vehicle, put them back together when you're done so the pieces don't get lost. And you know, if you do have extra hardware left over that you can't put back together, take pictures, put it in a bag, label it, put it in a, you know, little hardware boxes, whatever you can do to make, uh, keep good track of it so that when you go to put this car back together, you're not suddenly guessing and maybe putting the wrong hardware in the wrong place. So I'm going to get this guy out now. Okay, everybody, so we got the car carpets all the way out. Uh, I'm gonna go over some of the details a little later, but overall things look pretty good. Uh, next thing that we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be going in here and taking out the old crusty sound deadening. And I'm gonna be over going over a tip or two on how to do that, especially on newer vehicles. But overall, it's looking very promising, very good. Thank you for watching this episode of Engine Gremlin. I hope you guys really enjoyed it. We had a lot of fun making it, albeit it was kind of gross along the way, but we still had a lot of fun. Uh, we are actually thinking about doing a mailbag Q&A episode. So if you have a question that you want to send to us or a comment or something that you want to suggest or anything of that nature, you know, feel free to let us know in the comments or let us know on Twitter and Instagram. Links are both in the description. Also, please feel free to check out our Patreon page. Uh, any support that you could consider giving there is greatly appreciated. I'd really love to have some additional support for the show so that we can keep making regular content and increase the quality of our content, not to mention just help out the build of the car. Also, if you would like to sponsor the show, please reach out to us at enginegremlin at gmail.com, whether that be financially or ad placement or a product that you would like to have us put on the car. We will take all of those things seriously. So until then, I will see you guys next time. As you can see, we had a stowaway. This is a brown recluse spider. He is roughly in diameter about the size of a quarter. Uh, and you can tell it's a brown recluse by the 
uh, violin shape on his back. Well, specifically on his head going into his back. So, you know, we did get this car in Missouri. Uh, they're, they're an incredibly common spider down there in Missouri. I found him in the electrical track in the door as I was pulling back the tape. He actually really surprised me. But these guys are nasty. You know, a Black Widow is highly venomous, but a brown recluse is necrotic. Their bite will leave you with a festering open wound. The tissue starts to decay. You're not actually more likely to die from the, from the venom. You're more likely to die from the infection from that wound. So, this should just go as a reminder. Anytime you're dealing in these old cars, you know, look around. Things have been living in there. And, you know, they have made it their home. So, make sure that you're careful. You know, we had mice and rats in here, obviously. This is a brown recluse. He could have snuck up on bit me and... You know, that would have that would have been real bad. So anyway, cars looking real great.